got that. Uh, thank you very much for all of the details there, Yash. Well, uh, let's welcome in Sudeep Bandhapadhyay, Group Chairman at uh, Indy Trade Capital. Sudeep, great to have you on the show. Thank you for uh, joining in. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty interesting uh, view that we've got from the street on HDFC Live. So let me actually start with that. Uh, this has been a hotly debated stock and the kind of price damage that we've seen. I mean, uh, the budget announcements and even before that, it's been quite a laggard. Do you think a turnaround is in sight? Well, Surbhi, I think uh, the entire life insurance uh, pack I like. Uh, I believe uh, fundamentally nothing has changed uh, between what we were all talking about, uh, let's say, uh, you know, one year back and now. Uh, the rationale uh, that uh, we are grossly underpenetrated as a country and there is significant scope for expansion as far as life insurance business is concerned uh, definitely uh, remains. Uh, yes, uh, there were challenges uh, during COVID and uh, the claims uh, on account of the loss of life uh, as far as COVID is concerned and pretty much uh, the entire life insurance industry did uh, have their own set of uh, claim ratio going up and challenges uh, as far as valuation is concerned. The budget, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the change made in the budget as far as, uh, you know, uh, higher uh, value insurance policies are concerned. Uh, our belief is that it won't have a long-term impact. It will require some amount of adjustment uh, at most of the life insurance companies, uh, but it won't have any significant long-term or medium-term impact on their performance or uh, the margins. Uh, so the, uh, the logic for buying an insurance company for long-term does remain. As far as HDFC life is concerned, the Excite life acquisition and uh, you know absorption uh, does give it uh, uh, a leg up, and uh, yes, valuations are uh, still uh, uh, you know kind of elevated if you compare with other things. But I think uh, considering the growth potential, HDFC Life and even SBI Life do look extremely good at current valuation. Okay, let me just put out some stocks, Sudeep. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, throw the question your way. Uh, so basically, uh, the idea is that the market started correcting on the latest Bank Worries episode uh, starting last Wednesday, which was the March 8th of March. And uh, we've given up about 4.5% of the index. So uh, what I've done is just looked at Nifty and uh, Midcap Losers, which has taken the biggest knock. And mind you, it doesn't look prima facie that uh, the corrections have got anything to do with, uh, or they have, they're directly, or even actually in some cases indirectly related to what's happening uh, with a broader risk of that is bank related worries but indescent is down about 13 percent mahindra and mahindra is down nine percent this is just last since last wednesday ril is actually the heavyweight is down eight uh, adani is down eight aisha motors is down about seven percent and then uh losers uh, these are the gainers i mean a few of them bpcl tech mahindra tech, uh, titan uh, but uh, the other mid cap losers astral is down big time uh, I'm not even sure, actually, is it just pure price performance? Is there some adjustment? But it sh shows up as a big 30% cut. Uh, Patanjali is down 12%. We know the reason, of course, news flow related. And uh, Union Bank and Canada Bank are the others, which are down 12 and 10% uh, respectively. Uh, there are more, but I'm just kind of limiting myself uh, uh, here with these five or six names from the large cap and mid cap space. Sudeep, anything of, you, of interest uh, to you here? Well, I think, uh, you know, if you look at uh, some of the large cap names, pretty much uh, the uh, reason for the sharp correction was FII selling. Uh, you know, FII's hold a large chunk of uh, m and RIL, uh, uh, and obviously they were sell, uh, selling uh, these in these counters when, uh, uh, you know, they, they became risk averse post what was happening in U.S. banking uh, industry. Uh, if I have to pick up something, uh, 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 taking advantage of the correction, I will probably go for Reliance. Uh, fundamentally, nothing has changed as far as Reliance is concerned. Yes, uh, we were all expecting ARPUs to start going up, but with Reliance launching, uh, you know, pack a new pack uh, uh, pricing for attracting postpaid customers, there is still price war, and probably ARPUs will not go up in a hurry. But otherwise, the value unlocking argument over a period of maybe uh, you know six to twelve months whether it's the uh, uh, geo business or the retail or even the green energy business does uh, remain. Uh, you know, uh, so the, the refining margins 
yes, oil prices have come down, refining margins will probably correct, but still, I think uh, we have nothing to lose hope as far as our reliance is concerned, and the valuation after correction do look attractive for a medium to long-term perspective. Uh, I will also not, uh, you know, uh, uh, probably write off in the Sindh Bank. Uh, the correction to an extent was due to the disappointment on uh, only two-year extension for the CEO, uh, MD and CEO. Uh, market was expecting three. Uh, there are some question marks why it happened for only uh, two years. But the bank has been doing a lot of things right. And the correction gives uh, uh, an opportunity to buy into in the Sindh Bank. Uh, it's slightly moved up today, but uh, still... Uh, the logic remains that fundamentally the business is doing well and the growth levers are intact. I mean, I also found it a little weird. Right? I mean, if, you're, uh, if you have any doubts about a bank leadership, uh, well, the market closed in uh, three minutes. So let's quickly tell you uh, the, the lay of the land. Three quarters of a percent higher on the Nifty. The bank Nifty did much better with a 1.4% gain. Uh, for the week, uh, the, the Nifty is down 300 points. That's about 1.7%. And you got the Bank Nifty, which uh, for the week,